Hey everybody, Michelle with Michelle's Frugal Living here and thanks for watching my videos and today I'm going to turn this mink coat into four pillows. <laughs> okay, so it, it's a uh, real fur. Um, someone brought this to me and um, it's a paying job and uh, so I'm not questioning why she wants to cut up uh, a mink coat. It is an old mink coat. It's a really fine quality one. You can't see the seams in it. Um, but this is what she wants. So, um, based on when I was measuring it, uh, while she was standing there and giving her a rough idea, um, if I could get four pillows out of it, um, I measured the arms and the, the body of it. And I was like, well, I could probably get three 18 inch pillows. The other one, the fourth pillow, cause she wants four. Um, I, I don't know how big it's going to be. Um, she says she's giving them as Christmas gifts. So they're not next to each other in what she told me. So they're, if they're, they vary in size a little bit, um, it's not going to be a big deal. So I've got some 14 inch pillow forms, uh, 16 and uh, 18 plus I could make a pillow form if I need something different if those won't work and um, the least amount of hand sewing that I'm gonna have to do on this the better the first thing I need to do is measure the coat to figure out um, how I'm gonna lay out cutting it and in measuring it enough that I know I'm gonna be able to get four pillows out of this okay so whatever it is that you're making out of your uh, pieces of fur you need to measure it a lot before you actually go in there and start cutting it up um, and have all of it laid out before you start cutting and I don't even want to take any of this coat apart until I knew that um, I was going to be able to get four pillows out of it one of them well, might I might have to piece some of it together in order to get it a larger pillow, or it's just going to have to be a little bit smaller than the other ones, okay? Um, so, what I did was, is I'm shooting for 18-inch pillows, right? But if they have to, you know, if they turn out to be 17 when they're finished, which is probably what's going to be, you know, once I get seam allowance in them, because of the size of this. So, um, measuring across the cuff here, now there's some worn area here, so I'm going to try to avoid that. So, um, really, you know, the sewing is, the edge is going to have to start up here. But if you lay this down flat and I measured across, it's about 10 inches across here, doubled over. So, that gives me 20 inches here. So, I know I'm good that way. But the sleeves taper off a lot up here. So, um, measuring from down here, if I want 18, actually, let me show you, from the, um, the armpit, because that's where it starts getting a little bit different in the way the the, the uh, fur is. It's roughly 18 inches from this cuff up there to the armpit. Okay, so that gives me my length this way. I have it down here at the bottom. The problem comes in right here. How wide is it right here across where at this point? And it's a little over 9 inches double, so maybe 19 inches. So I think I'm going to be perfectly spot on on the size on this uh on the sleeve so those two sleeves get turned into one pillow there's one <laughs> out of out of the four okay so <laughs> the um the next thing i did was is i measured all the way around the bottom of the coat and um oh actually let me show you this too i did pull the um part of the lining out and I stitched this under my sewing machine to see if my sewing machine was going to sew it really good. Because if the sewing machine wasn't going to sew it, then I wasn't going to do this. Um, because I wasn't going to hand stitch all this leather together. The least amount of hand stitching is going to be the hole to close it up that I'm going to do hand stitching on. And that's going to be it. Um, otherwise, it's going to be sewing around. So I, I did that. So anyways, that's what that's about. Um, so I measured all the way around the bottom of the coat. And... I got 72 inches. Okay, so I got one pillow taken care of from the arms. Ar along the bottom, 72 inches. So I divided that by four, and that comes out to be 18 inches. So that's just a rough measurement. If that's the case, then I'm going to lose. That's, that's like the cut size 
I'll lose some with the seam allowance. So that's why I say the pillows may be a little bit less than 18 inches. So I'll just, once I get it laid out flat, I'll decide. So that's going to give me two pillows from cut along the bottom. So then I, you know, and then I'll just however high up. Okay. So the rest of it up there, I'm not sure that I can get a full uh, piece cut that's 18 inches. I'm just going to have to see because the pocket is right here. And um, where it might be interesting to have a pocket on the pillow, um, it does show some wear. There's, there's, so I'm just going to have to see. Um, one option would be to just uh, stitch that, hand stitch that pocket closed like that and just and let it go. So that may be what, I, I don't know what this fourth pillow, how big it's going to be and which piece I'm going to make out of it, okay? All right, <laughs> so... I know I can do those pieces. I know there's going to be quite a bit left over um, to give her. The other thing is, is that last one, if I have to sew some pieces together, it may be. Because when I stitched this right here and then opened up, you know, here here's the line. It's like this fur really covers it up and I really didn't have to pull any out to hide the seam or anything. So if I have to stitch two pieces together, I think it might be all right. It, it, I think it'll, it'll flow really well. Okay, so... Um, the one thing I have to contend with also is on the back, and I'm, it looks like it, it it lands perfectly in the middle, and it's really hard to see because it's dark, um, on dark, but this is, um, there's a worn spot right here, and um, so what I'm considering doing is um, when I lay these pieces out, and I'll talk about this when I get it laid out flat, is um, actually because one panel, two panels... I think I'm just going to cut one big rectangle as big as I can and cut it when I cut off this bottom, cut a big rectangle and only have to sew three sides instead of sewing four sides around the pillow. So um, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so now I got to start taking the coat apart. Um, my thought is I want to take apart as little of this as I can. There's no reason for me to take the whole coat apart piece by piece because I'm not going to use all of it. And um, I'll just put the leftover pieces in a bag and she can do what she wants with them, right? Okay, so <clears throat> I know I want the arm piece up to here at least. So, um, yeah, I just got my seam ripper. And I'm just going to go through and, um, and pull these seams out. What I want to do is to... Um, hopefully be able to see the seam in um, that runs under the arm up to the armpit and I'm going to then um, I, I might just um, depending on how easy that's going to be because I haven't tried to take a seam out of the uh, fur itself um, when I get there um, I may be able to take the stitches out or I may just cut it all right, so I got the um, lining disconnected here at the cuff, and I could see the the seam going up the up to the armpit, um, and I ran the um, seam ripper along these stitches right here, and they came out really easily, and um, and it brought the two in half. So I w I'm able to do that now. Um, up here they've they've got like this uh fusible interfacing or well actually it's not fused down to it it's just sewn i guess to help stabilize it um up here but down here it, this is the raw leather um here and um they've got several pieces stitched in you can see right here um so um I need to take this seam out right here as well. But like I said, I'm not going to use, probably use that because it's all rough. But I don't want to take that off. I'm going to leave that all attached until I get, um, I get it laid out flat. And then we'll look at it. All right. So I cut up to the, up to the armpit and got it um, laid out there. This that's kind of <clears throat> where it's notched off because it really tapers up there going up around the shoulder. But anyways, you can see. And um, 
and have it laid out flat. I also, because it has this worn spot, I took this pin and um, I stuck a straight pin in it knowing that's the lowest down I can go. I'm going to have to cut this piece off down along here. And, um, <clears throat> and I know this piece... The fur is running that direction, whereas this is going this way. But it's going to allow me to get the biggest pillow I can. I guess it adds a little interest along the edge of the pillow. <laughs> because the one piece is running the other direction. But it is what it is. Okay, so I need 18 inches. I don't have a square that is at least 18 inches. But um, I was looking around for something that measured. This uh, mailing box actually measures... Um, 19 inches exactly that direction this way it's like 15 and a quarter which is fine I got 19 that'll give me some seam allowance and it knows I know that I got it big enough and um, so if I put this down on here like I said when I dry measured it well when it was still together um, it was longer here so I know that I'm going to cut it at 19 inches and I got it lined up with my pins right here and I just center it because it flares out here at the sides down here around the cuff it got bigger so um and up here if i stretch it out and lay it out flat it's just the right size um 19 inches right across there so it all worked out <clears throat> on this piece and um so i got a pen i'm an ink pen or you can use marker or whatever i'm just gonna draw me a line um along here um, where I want to cut or if I wanted to if I had my rotary cutter out I might use that but I don't know with fur I don't I really didn't want to use the rotary cutter um, anyways um, but this way I'll just draw I'll draw my line and um, and then I'll cut out Okay, so that's that way. Now, like I said, this was only 15 and a half this way. So I have to turn this and um, and then I'll just line it up with my lines and get this side because it's still, it's still attached um, up here to the coat. Um, Okay, so now I'm cutting along my line here. Well, there's no turning back now, right? Pull the pins out. And um, these bits are... I'm just going to get a, a bag and I'm just going to stick all these bits in it. And they're going to start shedding. Um, and now I'm just going to give those back to her. So let me get this cut out. All right, so there's the first arm piece. I've got the seams ripped out of the second arm. And I just laid the first piece down on top of the the second piece. And, and I'm just going to... I'm going to use it as a pattern. I did mark my spot that I don't want to go past that because this is one, this arm is a lot more worn <clears throat> down than the other one <clears throat> so it'll just have to be right there in order for it to fit um, I did notice that the fur gets the flying when you start cutting it um, so I'm trying to um, clean it as I go and I got a wet paper towel and wiped this off and rounding all of that up when I as I as I go because I'm gonna have fur flying all over my house okay anyway I'll get this cut off all right so I have the two pieces cut out and um, basically I'm gonna put them right sides together and just go ahead and do that now 
um, and I'm going to pin them. Now I'm, I'm leaving them lined up the exact same way so the, the nap of the fur goes the same way and the cuff is down here um, together at the bottom. And um, when I sew it together, um, and I'll show you that, I'll sew it around, I'm going to leave an opening down here. I got to take into consideration that I've got to stuff the pillow form into it. Um, you could put a zipper in if you wanted to. She didn't say that she wanted to be able to take the pillow forms out or have a zipper. And of course, that would mean less hand sewing, but it would mean more some machine sewing and also the cost of the zippers. And um, I don't think she wants to do that. All right, time to take the lining out of bottom. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to do it about... 19, 20, about 20 inches up uh, the sides and along the bottom. Get it out of the way and see what else is in here that I have to contend with. So um, this I don't need, but um, of course I'm leaving this backing on here. And then there's this um, other piece of like stabilizer in here and i will say that um, when i was uh, pulling the seams on the arms up around the armpit area the uh, the um the leather was this it's getting in the this uh, backing fabric is kind of getting dry rotted and so some of it was ripping on me um so um, depending on how old yours is and how it's been stored it may you know have problems that way Okay, so I have the lining pulled out, and um, what I found is, uh, one, there's a silk uh, hem facing in here. I'm not worrying about ripping it out. It didn't come out when I took it out, so it's going to stay. Um, the bottom is straight. I'm good with that, and my measurement of 72 inches is right. Now, what happens is, is the coat tapers up as it gets higher. Um, also, when I measure the pockets end, it's exactly 19 inches between the bottom of the coat and the bottom of the pocket. So I'm good distance wise that way. Um, and the 72 inches on the very bottom is good. But what happened is, is because of the taper, um, it, it, it gets skinnier up at the top. So I don't have the full 72 inches that I was hoping to have that I have down at the bottom. Um, so I'm, I'm going to compensate for that. And I'll talk about that. So um, I need to square up this edge. There's an extra two inches over here on the side that I'm going to square up. And then I'll trim that off. And then I'm going to start my measurement over here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot for a 17 and a half inch pillow. Um, and so I'm going to try and cut squares that are 18 inches square with a half inch seam allowance. Okay. Um, when they sewed this uh, fur together the there is just no seam allowance it basically and i think that helps with the nap uh, not getting stuck up in the um in the seam allowance they they did a like a a binding stitch uh with the machine all the way down right on the edge so that when it lays out it, it kind of lays out flat and there isn't any bulkiness in the seams but um the the seams i'm doing are going to be wider um, I, I need them to be sturdier than that because some of them are just like pulling right apart. Okay, so I'm going to cut, um, actually I need 18 and a half inches tall and I need, I'm going to go 36 inches wide and I'm just going to cut a big rectangle right here and I'm going to fold that over wherever that lands over here. One and like I said, I want to go 18 and a half inches tall based off of the bottom. I'm not sure where I'm at on the camera. Okay. The, um, and my board is 19 inches, right? <laughs> so I marked half inches here and here. So I know, um, what height I need to go to. Um, basically, I, like I said, I wanted to square up this edge. And if I get this all laid out flat right here. Okay, I've got it matched up with the bottom edge of the the fur. You can see how there is this uh, extra over here on the side. So that's what I want to um, I want to trim that off, and that'll be one side. Okay, so I squared it up. 
and um, and then I want to go 18 and a half inches high. So I'm lining that up, and there's the bottom of the the pocket. So I'm I'm not having trouble with um, the pockets not in my way, at least on this piece. No, <laughs> that that fourth pillow is really going to be the challenge. Okay, so now I've got that line, and I'm just going to have to. Um, go over like I said 36 inches and I'll cut out that big rectangle all right so I've got the second pillow cut out and you can see it's just one long piece 36 inches that way 18 and a half that way so I'm not going to sew this side hopefully it'll look okay when I get the pillow form in it I think it'll be fine that would technically be the side of the pillow because the nap you know this was the top of the coat going down here and this is the bottom edge and, um, anyways, and I'll leave the opening to sew and put the pillow form in. I'll leave it down here, um, on the bottom edge and stuff the pillow form in up there. All right, so doing some calculations on what I have left so that I can get two more pillows out of this. Um, I've been doing some calculations. This bottom piece that's left, you can see it's got a big taper here. Um, because of the way the bottom is tapered. Um, I've got, at the tall point, I've got 26 inches across there. So, if I'm shooting for the same size as the last one, that's going to be a finished size of 17 and a half inches. Um, if I add 10 more inches, um, that'll get me to the 36. I have to take into account some seam allowance, so if I could stretch it out to cut an 11 or anywhere, anywhere between 10 and 11 inches is what I want to get. And then I will go ahead and cut this um, 17 inches tall. And so then I'll just piece, I'll, I'm going to straighten this up. I may need that curve, so I'm not going to cut it off yet until I get the other piece cut out. But um, I, I will uh, square it up and um, sew the other piece that I'm going to cut out up here on the lapel. So looking at the two sides, I decided this is the side that I want to use for this piece because the fourth pillow is the main piece is going to come out of the back right here. And then this side of the, the lapel and that side of the lapel is a little bit wider than this side over here. And I need that extra distance um, for the other pillow. And if they, if they scrunch down to uh, 17 inches or less, I mean, it'll be fine. Um, it, these, I can't, I can't get 18 inch square pillows out of all of this. Um, okay. So what I did, I took the pocket off and, um, to, um, get rid of this, uh, worn area, um, I'm in to close up the hole. Um, I took the pocket off and then I'll just stick these together like this. I'm just going to stitch across there and close up that hole. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So then I have this bigger piece. The only problem with this side is right here is a hole where the button was sewn on. Um, and I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just leaving it the way it is. It is what it is. The fur will get on it. Plus, I figure this is going to be like the back of the pillow. Because um, you never look at both sides of the pillow at the same time. Okay, now the other problem here, because this was the big wear spot right on the lapel um, where this was folded over. So it's really worn. So I can't, I really don't want to use all the way to that edge. I wish I could, but um, I'm going to have to just cut over here knowing I got a half an inch seam allowance. And that, um, so my seam will just run right along the edge of this worn lapel. Okay, so this is the piece that I cut off of the bottom. Here's that bottom edge. And, um, and it, I cut it 18 and a half inches tall. Because once I, when I actually turned it over and started measuring it, I, I'm, I'm going for that. And I think it's going to work. I'll show you. Um, so um, you can see how the one edge is flared off. So I'll have to straighten. I'll still cut that off and straighten it up. Um, but basically, I'm going to... I'm, this one I'm shooting for a 17 and a half inch pillow. Um, so it'll be folded on one edge there, but then I need this piece to go in here. And that's what I was talking about cutting from the um, lapel. And I've got it flipped upside down. And um, 11 inches will be better for me because I'm, I'm shooting for a finished size of 17 and a half. 
Um, and so laying this out, um, I, I cut, there's where the worn piece of the lapel was. There's where the button was at. And that's the piece I cut off right here to help square up this edge and I could look at it a little easier. So if I measure 11, it's going to get me right past the pockets. So like I said, I'm going to stitch along there to sew up the hole for the pocket. And all the way up here, I've got 11 inches over to this um, last point, the, the smallest point over here at the arm. And, um, and so I need 18 and a half this way, which is going to be up here. The worst part about this piece is, and the lapel, is it's got these darts put into it so that it's more contoured up around the shoulders. And so there is a little bit of a buckle right here. I mean, it's a, it's a standard way that things are made. Um, I think in the big scheme of things, it being fur and it being on a pillow, and this is going to be the back of the pillow because it won't be as pretty as the front. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that it's going to make any difference. It is what it is. So, um, if I really felt like it was going to be a problem, um, when I sewed up this pocket, I could, um, bring a pleat all the way here and take up that distance, um, there and, and get rid of the, the little bit of bulkiness. But for the most part, I think it's going to be okay once it has the pillow form in it and it's kind of like stretching it out. All right, I've got the other uh, side piece cut out. This was off the lapel that I was just talking about. And so basically it's going to get sewn to that. I got to sew up the hole from the pocket first. And then I will sew this onto here like that. And then I will, I need to trim this off to make it straight. And then, um, and then I'll sew it together. So um, that'll be a side seam over there that I don't have to sew. Um, together and yeah so that's pillow number three so pillow number four this one's um gonna be similar to that one but i think it's gonna have to be a lot smaller so here is the back um and i'm considering using um part of the sleeve since it, the way that it's sewn in here and um, that's why I want to get that other lapel piece cut off and see how flat this lays so I if I stitch this piece back down right here I got I could really come all the way over to here okay pillow number four I was looking at what I had and thinking I was gonna you know just cut this lapel piece out and then you know cut between the armholes as far as I can and then I laid the board down in here that's 19 inches this way it's 15 and a quarter that way and I was just a measure to see you know like what I was looking at and I was like well if it wasn't for the armhole that would make I could get another 18 inch pillow so what I think I'm going to do so that I don't have to cut another in the here or whatever, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see how this looks. I know it's not going to be any taller than 19. That is if I was going with an 18 inch pillow, right? Um, it finished. So actually, I think I'm going to cut, I'm going to go ahead and cut this all the way across here at um, 18 and a half uh, finished, then that would give me a 17 and a half pillow like the other one. Now, um, this is the pocket right here. So like the other one, I'm gonna stitch that on the inside and get rid of that. I do have the little bit of a buckle because of the pleats on this side right here. But like I said, I think with the pillow form in there, it's, you know, cause it's not gonna be laying flat with the pillow form in there. The other problem I have is up here at the lapel um, where it's worn, where this was folded under and that was the edge right there that got rubbed. Um, so I was thinking I could cut it off like I did on the other one, but also what I thought was is if I just put that together and just stitch the same way I'm going to have a stitch here, just stitch that down, um, right there and, and hide that because it's not too bad. It's a really skinny strip right there. And I think it'll be a lot, be a lot easier to hide that than it was really 
a lot wider on the other lapel. So, um, yeah, so what I need to do is cut it off up here at the height and then see how how it, how much I'm going to have to piece into there because I certainly have enough to put a piece into that armhole there. All right, for pillow number four, um, I've got the piece cut out, but this one's going to have more uh, pieces pieced together on it. So um, this was the armhole on the jacket, the coat. This was the back um, across the uh, shoulder blades right here. So I cut this side piece off, got it all squared up. In actually measuring it, I am going to end up with an... Um, 17 and a half, 18 inch pillow. I actually it should be 17 and a half because of my seam allowances. I cut this 18 and a half. And um, so that piece is cut off. That's, there's a little bit where um, when I was taking the sleeve off, I'll just have to stitch that back down and then that'll be fine. So that's the piece of the sleeve. So the nap on it is just angled at a little bit funny or a little bit off, but it'll be okay. Um, I'm going to shoot for this to be the front of the pillow. So this side is going to wrap around. I'm going to have it wrap around just a little bit. Okay, so here's the other armhole. And here's the pocket. So I'm going to, like I said, I'll stitch that up. And I need to stitch this little piece of the lapel down and stitch that and hide that um, wear. But, um, and this ripped out right here. So I'll have to stitch that back on back together. Now, as for filling in the armhole, I mean, I could go ahead and cut this whole section out and then sew two pieces together here and here and then, and then sew it back in there. I could do that. I took this side piece that was over there that was left, knowing that the nap is running the same direction. And this piece is big enough to go in here. So that's going to be a little tricky, um, sewing. Um, also I'll have it, it'll be more squared off than, than this is, this is rounded. I think I'll, I'll square, square this off when I sew it. But, um, yeah, that's going to be the trickiest thing that I do <laughs> is setting that in there. But I'm confident I can do it because I've sewn a lot of things in my life. Um, yeah, I mean, I could have left the, um, the sleeve in there somewhat and then and used it and just peached in a little piece except the nap would be running uh, completely the wrong way and this isn't big enough uh, because it's got some pleats put in it up here it's not big enough to fill in the hole to let it lay flat um, that's why I'm not using it so I have that piece left over and pretty much um, there's the other shoulder off of the uh, sleeve and then the collar um, and that's what's left. <laughs> okay. Plus the, a few trimmings on, uh, just to straighten up the other pieces. All right. Um, anyhow, I've, um, got to start sewing now. Okay. Time to get sewing. And, um, my machine has a setting for leather. You know, if you have that or not, or you can tell it it's more heavyweight, um, it set my stitch length to 3.0 and it's telling me my pressure foot should be at four. And, um, and it wants me to use the Teflon foot, but um, I'm just going to do the standard one because I don't think this is a problem. It's got this coating on it. So it's not going to be, except for this little area right here, I'm not going to be sewing directly on the leather. And um, anyways, I'll sew a little bit and see how it goes. I may increase the stitch length, um, because this is kind of, it's fur. Actually, I think I'm going to go to 3.5 because it has this fur in it. And um, although it, it, when it mushes down, it's not that bad. Um, okay, so this is pillow number one. And like I said, I'm doing half inch seam allowances, what I allowed myself for. And it'll give me a lot of wiggle room. So, um, and so I'm starting down on the bottom where I'm going to be leaving the opening to stuff the pillow form in there and I'm just doing a couple of back stitches um, and so I'm just gonna take it easy here at the beginning and see um, I'm, I'm not having any trouble 
um, sewing this. Um, and I don't feel like it's, you know, sliding around on me or anything like that. So, um, I just gotta, um, pivot here at my corner. And I'm just trying to keep it flat. I do have an extension table that I could put on here if I felt like I needed it to be flatter. Um, but I don't. So, okay, I'm just going to continue around and sew this one up. Okay, so I got stitched all the way around. Um, I'm not going to trim the corners. This uh, leather is uh, fur is just old. And as I've been ripping it, the coat apart, it it rips in some places and stuff. So I, I want to leave the corners a little more sturdy. It may not give them good square corners when I turn it, but um, I think it'll be better for the structure of this, especially if they have these sitting on their sofa or someplace that hopefully they aren't necessarily using them. Um, and, oh, I did go around the, and look and make sure that I got in far from the edge everywhere because it's kind of bulky and sometimes you can lose track of um, where you're stitching you know when you're doing fur of any type fake fur real fur okay so I've got pillow number one turned and here's the corners and there's the side seam and you know if you just work uh, fur a little bit um, you could really make the seams go away and be very minimal and hopefully that'll happen with all those other seams I'm going to have to do to sew pieces together. Um, as I was saying, this is a little bit fragile. And it just happened that there were two pieces on this cuff. This is the bottom where the cuffs on the arms were. Um, and there were two pieces sewed together right there. And it pulled apart when I was turning it. So I'll just um, have to st whip stitch that closed when I close up the bottom right here. So otherwise, um, number one looks good. And so number two, if you remember, it's the one where I cut one long rectangle piece. So this side seam, I don't need to stitch that. So basically, um, this is the bottom. Um, the nap is running that direction because that's the bottom of the coat where that silk ribbon was him facing and um, so basically I'm going to leave the opening over there on that corner and I'm just going to start stitching here on this side and um, go around and just leave the opening there okay pillow number two is sewn together time to turn it so I put my arm in there I grab the far corner and um, and I'm pulling it out being gentle on it because I don't want to rip it or anything and once again I might have made my hole too small to try and jam the pillow form in there but I'm always doing that like with everything that I have to turn so that I don't have to when I'm hand sewing and I don't so I don't have to hand sew so much <laughs> okay so I think um, here it is and once again did not trim those corners um, and so just um, working the fur out of the out of the stitching there and um, and just poking the corners out the best that they'll go out and yeah I think um, this one turned out really well with the other one so there's the edge that it was just folded over and then the the opening right there so I'll just turn in and, and sew down so um, yeah there's two done okay pillow number three if you remember used part of the um, the center I mean well the it was the side um, going to the middle and there's where the button was so it got part of the, the pocket and so I needed to sew this close. So what I want to do is just fold it over and let it be flat. And um, it might be a little bulky there, but I'll see after I sew it together and um, to trim it off. But I didn't want to cut it off initially. And um, 
it's a welted pocket I think is what they call that so I just need to stitch right along there and then hopefully that will hide um, the wear and it'll close this up I'll do a little back stitching right there and I'm just gonna stay right along that edge and make sure that it stays flat back stitching make it hold and there we go I don't know if you how well you can see that how dark it is but um, yeah I think in with time the way that you know the fur will just you know mingle itself together and it'll it'll just go away um, as for the bulkiness of it this piece is right at the same length as the edge of the pillow so um, it's going to have to come off. Um, so I'll trim off a little bit. And, you know, part of my goal is, is for these is to not have them um, rip out. So I don't want to, I'm not going to cut the seams as close as the original seams are. Um, just because it's a little bit more fragile with age. Okay, so now it's not so bulky. That'll be fine. And, okay, so to keep the nap the same way, all right, this piece has got to get sewn to this side. Uh, and that's what I'll do now. Actually, I need to pin the, uh, I need to pin it just so that I can keep it straight since it's so bulky. And, um, and then I'll sew it together. Okay, so there's the seam that I stitched the two pieces together. And then I um, laid the right sides together. And I've got the 18 and a half inches up here at the top and down at the bottom. Um, where I stitched the pocket closed, it kind of pulled it in so it, it's a little bit inset right there. Um, it'll be all right. So what I need to do is just, um, trim off this last edge over here. Uh, that's what I was waiting to do to see where this was all going to land. I'm going to leave that just a little bit bigger here and I'll just pull it over and, um, just even it up with the, with the top. Okay. And get rid of that bit of fur get the loose stuff off of here okay and then I can um, I'll pin this uh, together the edges together and then I'll stitch that number three is done um, sewing anyways that much until you know when I got it turned so this was the front um, and that was the bottom edge of the coat um, so it's pretty and then um, this is the side it wraps around where I didn't didn't have to sew I left the opening there and then here is the seam where I inset that piece and um, yeah so it looks pretty good there's there's where the button was and it's got a hole but like I said it's on the back and the pocket that I sewed up was right here so I think overall um, it's pretty hidden in there um, I think it I think it'd be fine even if the pillow got turned around to the back side I think um, I think it'd be fine okay on to number four All right, so, yeah, this is the trickiest one of all because I've got to fix um, these pieces here around. I don't want to mess these up too much to get them out of, uh, out of order, actually. Um, actually, well, it's one, big, one piece and then this other piece I need to put in there. But um, I need to sew this little piece back together. 
so old. All right, so this is also the one where I decided I would uh, fold it over and just do a stitch down there on that uh, lapel edge where it was worn. So, and when I cut it, I I left it a little, you know, compensating for the fact that I was going to do this, so it should be okay. Okay, on pillow number four, I got um, <clears throat> over here where the armhole was that was kind of the stitching had come out. I sewed that all up, and um, and then there's where I stitched the worn part on the lapel together and uh this also had the other pocket piece and so i stitched that closed and um and it looks just fine so that leaves me with the other armhole where it was at um and it's right here so i think what i'm going to do this side straighter than that side so i'm going to start with the straighter side and uh basically it's kind of like doing a welted pocket in a way, I guess. Um, I'm going to stitch this side down and leave myself um, some stitching area right here. Uh, you know, seam allowance on the bottom here. Um, so I'm going to go down here and then I'm going to have to pivot it and go across there. And I'll have to trim out that little corner there, I'm sure. Um, and then I'll see how it's going to work on the other sides. Okay, so I stitched down the one side. I've gotten to where I'm going to pivot. I'm going to, I've got the needle down. I raised the pressure foot and I'm turning the flat back around. And then, this is where I said it's, it's, it's really tricky. It's like, um, the question is, is how far over do I stitch before I have to turn and come up the other side? And so I think I'm going to go to about here. I think I, I've got plenty to work with. It's just a matter of it staying flat. Um, I'll go over here because um, I knew the armhole was a little rounded and I thought, well, I'm going to end up squaring this off a little bit more and I, I think that's I'm going to do a little back stitch on that. And yeah. Well, I didn't leave my needle down, so now I've lost my spot. Actually, I need to take this out and lay it out and see if it's laying flat before I have to rip out stitches. So I don't want to do that. All right. So, actually, if I tuck that piece in there, it actually is laying incredibly flat. Um, short of me trimming out that corner. I think I need to trim that corner where it was rounded rounded and um that actually sewed up a lot flatter than i expected is it, it actually looks a lot better than what i was expecting it to so um okay anyways yeah um how am i gonna how am i gonna finish this off um good question well, hopefully you don't get yourself into a situation where you have to do this um so I feel like um, I've got this edge turned under just a little bit because I know there's going to be a seam allowance there. And basically um, what I want to happen is this needs to get folded over here. And then I'll have to pin that exactly where I want it, get it exactly as flat as it can be. Pin that and then and then turn. I'll pin it when I have it over that way. Pin it, turn it over, and then um, 
get the pins in it on this side so that um, so I can stitch right down here and that's how I got the insert in there all right so I did it I sewed it in there um, this has also got a little bit of a buckle right here because oh and I got another place that needs sewed um, Part of it was because of the sewing. I had to get that um, that worn place sewn up in there. That's the pocket. And then these are the pleats that are on the breast of the coat. So it's kind of in between that and this. It's It kind of has buckled it. But this is will be the back of it, of the pillow. And I think it'll be fine once it gets on the pillow form. So I need to trim across here. And... Um, I did nip the corner a little bit so I could I could uh, get that to lay a little flatter and I think the other corner that I pivoted probably is okay. So I need to trim this up, stitch that, and then I'll stitch all the way around. So I got pillow number four sewn together. This is the back side and it was a little bit... Uh, wider down here at the bottom than it was at the top when I got it sewn together. I guess partially because of the inset that I put in right there. And so I just stitched the side in some more and made it more square. Um, and yeah, that's the area where I put that inset in and it's just about disappeared in there um, and everything. So this is the most wonky one of all. This would be what I would consider the front of it, and it's got this line across it because that that was on the back, right across the between the shoulder blades, where they had a natural seam um, in the fur, and um, and it's it's just that way. It's what I had to do. So, anyhow, I've got four pillow forms, and two of them <laughs> they're not from the same place. Um, two of them are smaller, skinnier than the other ones. So I have some fiber fill um, extra. When I get it in there, I'm just feeling like it's probably going to need some more. So I'm going to stick it in there first, and then I think I'll uh, split it open, put a little more fill in it, and then and then stitch this up, and then stitch up the bottom. But I'll see once I get it in there. Um, yeah, and this is where um, me leaving a big hole or not a big hole. <laughs> Not a very big hole. And in fact, this hole got smaller because I, I stitched that side up and, and brought it in because it was a little cattywamper. So I'm uh, probably going to have to cut this hole open a little bit bigger. And um, it's going to take a little bit of finagling, I think, to get these pillow forms inside. So I don't think I'm going to film that. All right, I did um, open the pillow form up and stuff some more stuffing into it uh, to make it fluffier, more like those other ones are. So, anyhow, um, yeah, stitch that a close. I've got just a regular sewing thread and a needle um, double thickness on that thread, and I tied a knot in it in the end of it. Um, and I'm just going to, I've got a thimble here in case I need it because this is pretty tough. I'm just going to lash this together. <laughs> The best I can. Um, fur is forgiving in hiding a multitude of uh, problems, right? So, um, yeah, I'm just going in one side and then in the other side, and um, and just pulling it up tight. I did have a little place where it ripped down. Um, when I was putting the pillow form in, I did have to take some of the stitches out of this one and make the opening a little bit wider um, to accommodate it, um, the, getting the pillow form in there. So, which means I'll probably have to take some stitches out of those other ones too. So, anyhow, I am just going to go down this and lash it closed basically and I've got a dark brown thread which is um, hiding in all of this dark brown fur so um, anyhow you don't need to sit there and watch me fiddle with this <laughs> okay there they are all four of them they got done 
And I can't believe that I got this big of pillows out of that coat, all four of them. So this one was number four and um, that has the <laughs> most <laughs> pieces patched together. Um, but anyways, yeah, the stitching down here, it's like, it just all, it's hiding in the fur. And um, I did put some more polyfill in those two pillow forms that were um, smaller. And uh, anyways, I think they all <laughs> turned out really good. Um, yeah, there it is. Thanks for watching.